الحمد للہ رب العالمین اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم مبارک اللہ سیدنا مولانا محمد و علیہ و صحابہ و من ولا السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ تعالیٰ وبرکاتہ ویلکم ٹو آر رمضان سیریز کنٹمپلیٹنگ دا قرآن بائی شیخ احمد سعد العظری الحمد للہ وی آر لوکنگ ایٹ دا تھیمس ود ان دا ویریس جز آف دا قرآن وی آر آن جز نمبر ففٹین پارٹ نمبر ففٹین اینڈ دا جز کنسس آف چیپٹرز السرا اینڈ القاف the theme the dominant idea in this juz is god's ennobling of mankind how god has has uh, given mankind noble qualities or has made him noble so bismillah rahman rahim the sheikh starts with god created adam and ennobled him exalted his exalting his state making the angels prostrate to him singling him out for all manner of honor and affection so man has been given a higher station a higher station in 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 creation and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has even asked his angels to prostrate uh, towards him so when iblis got the better of him and made clear his undying enmity towards him god protected his heart and accepted his repentance and sent him to earth that he might establish his worship being being uh, being being fallible iblis got the better of man of of man and professed his enmity uh, towards man but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected man's heart accepted his repentance and sent him to to this earth the reason why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us upon this earth was so that we could establish his worship when satan then deluded his children god sent to them messengers to deliver them from the ways of destruction and guide them to the path back to the all merciful lord so when uh, allah when, when when satan led astray our father adam alayhi salam and because of that when adam alayhi salam was then sent to earth to establish our worship uh, to establish the, his his worship satan then attacked the progeny of adam alayhi salam mankind and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then uh, sent upon the earth messengers to guide uh, the, uh, mankind uh, towards him to guide mankind uh, f- away from from satan the part this part elaborates some of the manifestations of this ennobling and the methods of remaining steadfast on this lofty way that the means to god's pleasure and to eternal bliss might be maintained so this the the uh, the ennobling that is considered the ennobling of mankind that is considered in this juz uh is is now further explained and also we are taught about remaining steadfast on the way of allah's uh, path uh, so as to gain allah's pleasure and eternal bliss so number one the chapter al-isra narrates the tale of how god honored the seal of of the prophets sallallahu alaihi wasallam and bore him by night from masjid al-haram to masjid al-aqsa this is verse number one chapter number 17 so we are told about the 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 night journey isra and this was one of the ways of ennobling the the messenger of allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is the best of creation as we know so the ennobling of humankind or the ennobling of mankind naturally begins with the ennobling of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his honoring of his servant moses by revealing to him the torah as guidance and glad tidings for the children of israel the book that was revealed to moses musa alaihi salam was of course another way of ennobling the children of israel ennobling mankind giving them uh, nobility they themselves the descendants of nova whom god had blessed along with those who carried with him with, uh, along with those carried with him in the ark and and preserved for them some mention on earth verse number 3 chapter number 17 further or before that the children of 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 nova or nova was was uh, was uh, was ennobled by being carried in the ark with his followers Number 2 amongst the clear uh, marks of this honoring is his Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's bestowal of lavish favors such as the blessings of night and day to assist man in recording the count of years and recalling the past and this is in verse number 12 chapter number 17 man can uh, record the count of years and uh, recall the past uh, because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creating night and day and this is one of the ways of uh, of of honoring a human being the ability to keep records 
as well as the bestowal of divine favors and lofty and lordly gifts freely uh, upon any that ask. Verse number 20, chapter number 17. So divine favors are given, lofty and lordly gifts are given upon, upon, uh, upon man as a sign of his nobility. He further singled out man with commands and prohibitions. That is with the capacity to recognize and make moral decisions. Taklif. And exhorted them to treat their parents with every good. Verse number 24, chapter number 17. So, when we are given commands and prohibitions, and when we, when uh, honoring our parents is, is instilled within us, this is a further way of giving nobility upon us, so that we can make moral decisions. In making these moral decisions, we are ev elevating our status. We are uh, aspiring to the high station to which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to achieve. He commanded them to spend moderately in the upkeep of their families, avoiding both miserliness and squandering. This is verses 27 to 29, chapter number 17, to protect, to protect and preserve their children, verses number 31, to shun adultery and murder, verse number 33, to safeguard the wealth of orphans, 34, and to uphold ethical conduct in business, verse number 35. So all these moral decisions or all these, um, uh, the, the, the moral criteria that is being presented to us is a way of, of, of ennobling us. When you protect and preserve your children, when you spend upon them, when you are neither a miser nor one who is spendthrift. So you, you take the middle path, you take the path of, of uh, you, you preserve the balance that we had spoken about uh, earlier. When you treat your parents well, uh, these all these things enable man to achieve his high uh, his high position to safeguard the wealth of orphans so that there is just justice there is adal there is uh, equity uh, in society so that the darkness of, of of oppression is dispelled by the light of belief and by the by the light of fairness and to uphold ethical conduct in business all this points towards having a society uh, that is that that is uh, that is that is running in in the optimal way in which it it, sh it should be running in a way that provides uh, goodness for everyone then which then frees us opens us towards the message of Allah subhanahu wa taala number three ennobling of mankind we have said God further ennobled mankind when He sent down to them revelations and wisdom verse number thirty nine chapter number seventeen and choose. And, and chose them from amongst all of his creation, every part of which glorifies his praise by tongue and state. Verse number 44, chapter number 17. One of the biggest ways in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given mankind, has given us nobility, is that he has sent us guidance. He has sent us revelation. And he has given us, he's bestowed us with an intellect, with a heart that is uh, receptive uh, to his lights. That is uh, that has wisdom as its foundation. This is this is uh, elevating us, or this is distinguishing us from his other creation. And then we glorify him. Every part of us glorifies his praises by tongue and state. When we say, when we when we glorify the one who has ennobled us uh, with our tongue and in our state and in our actions, that for us. When, when we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we, uh, we glorify Him, we are actually elevating our status. We are actually uh, achieving a higher level uh, in, 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 our, in our standing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not a sign of honor that He calls on them to steer clear of the traps of Saturn. Is it not a sign of honor that He calls on them to steer clear of the traps of Saturn by preserving their speech from disobedience? Verse number 53, chapter number 17, and rem reminding them of the devil's tricking of their father in that most ancient of times. Verse number 62, chapter 17. So, when he, the concern that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, when he doesn't want our nobility to be besmirched, uh, to be stained, he is now warning us of the pitfalls. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us that we should stay away from Satan, who tried to, uh, to, to work his, uh, his, his, his guileful ways upon Adam salam and to trick him. And so to preserve ourselves from, from the speech of disobedience, to preserve ourselves from Saturn's tricks. Had the devil not sworn to spare no effort in misguiding them and bringing all their good works to ruin? 
verse number 64, chapter number 17, one of the, uh, or, or rather the, the request when, when, uh, when uh, Saturn was debased in the heavens for refusing to bow down, to prostrate to Adam alayhi salam, and he knew that now he has been uh, rejected. He made a request and not only was his rejection and not only was his, was his, uh, was his being uh, something that was uh, disgusting, but look at, the re look at the request that he makes. Equally, uh, equally disgusting, something disgusting emanating from something that was already disgusting. disgusting. He requested Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow him to misguide the children of Adam. He, he wants to misguide us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is protecting us from all of that. And that he said that he will spare no effort in ruining them. But God protected them and soothed their fears by saying to the devil, as for my servants, you will have no power over them. Subhanallah, look at this. This is in verse number 65, chapter number 17. God gave him, uh, God gave him the permission or God, or God allowed him to lead people astray. But God still protected his people. God protected those people who are close to him. God protected his, his sincere servants. God protected his slaves who are in constant obedience of him by saying, as for my servants, you will have no power over them. So we are under the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we are sincere in our striving towards him. This is also one of the ways in which we have been ennobled. If you are protected from something that is misguiding you, if you are protected uh, from, from the trappings of, of, of Saturn, then indeed you have been ennobled. You have been taken care of. You have been given your, your maqam. Number four, is it not honor that God bears mankind over land and sea? Verse number 70, chapter number 17, that he carries us over land and sea and keeps them secure from the stubbornness and disbelief that lurks within them. Verse number 67, chapter number 17. So we physically, we are being carried in safety. We are being carried securely to our uh, port of call, to our destinations. Isn't that in itself uh, a way in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala noble, uh, ennobles us? And we are kept safe from the stubbornness and disbelief that lurks within us. Our, 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 our nafs trying to lead us astray. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps us safe from that as well. And that again is a sign of his ennobling us. Or that he raised among them the seal of the messengers, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, as a guide for them. Verse number 73, chapter number 17. Despite them sparing no effort to obstruct his mission in any way they could. Verse number 76. Chapter number 17, we are given the greatest, uh, one of the greatest ways in which we are honored is by the noble prophet sallallahu alayhi wa being sent amongst us as a guide. Isn't this again a further proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bestowing us with nobility? Despite the fact that he had people who, who were against him, despite the fact that he faced uh, untold misery, and untold difficulty in, in fulfilling his mission. But still, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him to us is one of the ways in which he gives us nobility. Alhamdulillah. Number five, yet he is the beneficent Lord who grants his blessings out of pure generosity. Whilst man, ungrateful by nature, acts in accordance with his innate disposition. Verse number 84, chapter number 17, willfully opposing the Prophet wasallam and demanding that an angelic messenger be sent instead. Though were this to happen, they would be destroyed. Verse number 95, chapter number 17. So what, what is, if you, if you could ask in colloquial terms, what is in it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Absolutely nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we very well aware, is, is, is independent of, of anything that we may in, in, in our, in our uh, 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 fickle state uh, be able to give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is nothing that we can benefit him, uh, him with and there is nothing that we can harm him with. So why does he give us all this nobility? Why did he uh, send uh, his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam? It was because out of pure generosity. And despite us being ungrateful, that's in our nature, to act in accordance with our uh, disposition, uh, to be ungrateful, to oppose the Prophet wasallam, And despite people, his people demanding that an angelic messenger be sent instead, they wanted to reject the Prophet wasallam, and they said, why isn't an angel in the form of a messenger or a messenger in the form of an angel being sent to us? 
and that this would, be this would destroy them eventually. The verses of the chapter Al-Isra end by turning to the account of Moses' mission to the Pharaoh with clear miracles and the letter's rejection of them. So now the, 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 the chapter goes towards Musa alayhi salam, chapter Al-Isra, and how he went to, to Pharaoh with clear miracles and how uh, Pharaoh rejected those. Before making clear that the people of knowledge and sincerity recognize the truth, weeping in humility and falling in prostration before it. Verse number 109, chapter number uh, 17. Again, truth is something that comes naturally to the people of knowledge and people of sincerity. If you open yourself up, if you are an accepting receptacle, if you are striving to search, if you, if you uh, accept the fact that you are in a state of brokenness, that you are in a, in a state of damage, that you need that healing power from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you need that, that damage to be repaired, that you need that emptiness to be filled, and that you, you strive in that, you, you are humble, you weep in humility, and you fall in prostration before it, you are going to be successful. Again, the focus is on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His nobility and His ennobling mankind. That we, if we go towards Him, surely, uh, success will come in our path. Then number six, ennobling of mankind again. The chapter Al-Kaf comes to unravel the reasons that man rebels against the one who does not fail to reward his servants. So, we, we rebel to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even though he is the one who rewards his people, even though he is the one who is gracious to his people. One of these is being deluded uh, by the appearance of strength and abuse of power. Verse number 20, chapter number 18. One of the reasons why we rebel or why mankind rebels against his Lord is because of the appearance of strength and abuse of power. Such a person underestimates his adversaries and forgets his own previous state of weakness. He, he decides to depend on himself. Man decides to uh, depend on himself and, and in so doing rebels against his Lord. And he forgets what he's up against. The, the, the forces uh, that he is up against. We are reminded of this in the story of the sleepers of the cave who fled for the sake of their faith and sought refuge in a cave. God turned to them with his mercy and kindness. So when you, when you turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, when, you, when, you, when you acknowledge your state of weakness, you go towards him and then he turns towards you with his mercy and kindness. On the other hand, we are reminded of the possessor of the two gardens. And this is the story in Surah Kaf, the one who possessed the two gardens, who became arrogant, such that God withdrew his blessing from him and he saw them wither before his eyes. Verse number 40, chapter number 18. So again, a state of, a state of arrogance, uh, a state of haughtiness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not the fitrah of mankind, of, 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 of man. It's not the, the, the state that we are supposed to be in is not the way to gain us success, is not the way to gain us uh, salvation, is not the way for the, for, the, for the message to come into us. It's a way of driving us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the, is the story or this is the parable that is presented to us that shows us, that, that manifests uh, this lesson. The man who possesses the two gardens, his arrogance brought about his downfall. It is then explained that the way to salvation and to maintain man's innate nobility is by continual learning and teaching as we travel in the footsteps of Moses, the one to whom God spoke. Verse number 60, chapter number 18. And subhanAllah, this is how it concludes that we are, we, we are shown the path, that the way to salvation and to, and to maintain, to sustain that noble state in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us and that noble state in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to see us is by learning and teaching. Nobility and a noble exercise is what brings about nobility. Something good, an exercise undertaken in goodness results or has the consequences of even greater goodness. If we are continuous in our desire to learn, in our desire to teach, and these are beautiful traits that we can, we can uh, instill in us at every level, at individual levels, at the level of, our, uh, of, of, of an individual human being, at the level of our families, at the level of our society. It is something that we have moved away from, unfortunately. And it is something that is very closely connected, as per the theme of this chapter, to the idea of a noble human being. The ability to learn. When you learn, you expand your horizons. When you learn, you expand your understanding. Your, 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 your intellect grows. Your, uh, your, your ideas flourish. 
And upon that flourishing, upon that understanding is, is, is a beautiful path of coming close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You understand the beautiful traits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It opens up vistas of, of the paths that you need to tread. It shows you the path. It brings about light in your life. It brings about light, light upon your heart, light upon your mind. And when you teach what you have gained, give back, give back to society. When you do that, when you learn, and when you teach, both of which uh, elevate you and enhance, enhance your, your, your situation and enhance and elevate and, and lift up the people around you, then we are the ones to whom, then we, we, we are treading on the path of Musa alayhi salam, the one to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke. What a great honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave upon this uh, magnificent messenger of his Musa alayhi salam. So this, these are the uh, these are the things connected to nobility of a human being, and these are the ideas that we should uh, strive to have in our lives. We pray that we pray that Allah subhanahu wa taala give us the tawfiq to understand His message and to realize our station of nobility, to understand that we are His creatures who have been given a special place, and that we should. Uh, we should safeguard uh, that place, that we should uh, uh, foster that place. We should, we should guard it jealously, that we should be stewards of, of this uh, great uh, quality, the great quality of nobility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given upon us. Guard it and improve upon it and to be thankful for it at every step of the way. Inshallah, in the next episode, we will look at Juz number 16. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to meet uh, in, the, in the upcoming program. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.